who aren't mouse specialists, I can tell you that a 28 to 33 months old mouse is a real geriatric mouse, about 85 years old. That mouse is not moving fast. And if you see the number of satellite cells in their fibers, perhaps that's a clue why that is. So we can then conclude, at least for a mammal, that older muscle has fewer stem cells. And if that's the case, then perhaps we just can't replenish our muscles as effectively. But there's a bit of a conundrum in this, because in fact, if a muscle stem cell, a satellite cell, is removed from a young muscle fiber, as you see in the top panels, in the middle there is a little nucleus that's lit up to show that that is, in fact, a stem cell nucleus, not a regular muscle nucleus. If that muscle satellite cell is removed from the muscle and is put in a dish and allowed to proliferate slowly but surely, it will make muscle. And it doesn't do it any better or worse than an old satellite cell. So there's something about the capacity to make muscle that appears to be retained even though these cells are less in number. However, that's not the only thing that a satellite cell has to do. It has to actually respond to injury and it has to proliferate. So are there changes in the capacity of these satellite cells to do that job? And for this, we turn to a number of different well-known signaling mechanisms within the muscle system. In this case, we're going to talk about one such signaling mechanism that has actually been associated with aging because it declines an old muscle. And that's the notch delta signaling mechanism. So I'll tell you in detail how it works, but first, the reason that it was considered was it's required for proper formation of the first skeletal muscle in the embryo, and it's also important in regulating satellite cells in the adult. And it has been shown to decline an old muscle. So what is the notch delta signaling pathway? And could it be a clue to the decrease in the capacity for skeletal muscle to regenerate as we get older? So here's a picture of what notch delta looks like. Notch delta consists of two subunits. Both are membrane-associated proteins. Both have a little part of them that sticks outside of the cell and another part inside. Delta is in the top in the satellite cell in this particular picture, and notch is in the bottom. These are both receptors in the sense that they receive signals. And the way they do that is to interact. When they interact, there's a, a relay of events, which includes clipping the two sides of the dumbbell of notch apart so that that pink part, the intracellular part, can move to the nucleus and start transcription of RNA. So in that case, we have a way of telling the cell on the outside to do something on the inside. And that's exactly what signaling does. In a young muscle, after injury, we find a very robust increase in the number of delta molecules sitting on those satellite cells. And that is probably the reason why, in fact, satellite cells are so responsive to injury, because they increase the signaling, rev it up, and, and are able, therefore, to go into another proliferative round. And interestingly, in old muscle, that response is absent so that the delta increase doesn't show up. Now, in some real life pictures from Tom Rando and his colleagues, here you see what muscle young and old looks like after it's been injured as it pertains to the notch delta signaling system. On the left is a young muscle that's been injured. And the injured fibers here are artificially lighted up in a sort of pink yellow scheme. And you can see that the same injured cells are in the old, but there's a difference. No green. What's the green? Green is delta. So delta is being highly upregulated in the entire vicinity of the injury in a young animal, but somehow that response is absent in the old animal. Now, again, this is one of these observations where you could say, well, this is an obscure set of receptors that's interacting, and it changes during aging. How do we know it has any causation? Maybe it's just going along for the ride. Now, in order to, to test for that, scientists have to perturb the system. So we have to change something about notch delta signaling and see if that changes the way the muscle can regenerate. And that's exactly what Tom Rando and his colleagues did with some very clever tricks. 
first of all, I have to explain that there are ways in which you can inhibit the notch signaling pathway as well as increasing the notch signaling pathway. And I won't go into the details of how we do this, but just suffice it to say that if you treat a muscle with an inhibitor and you injure that muscle in a young animal, you see that in the top left panel, a normal muscle starts to uh, degenerate in a way that is much, much more uh, reminiscent of what an old muscle looks like if you inhibit notch. That is to say, if you compare the inhibition of notch in a young animal, it looks much more like the way an old animal responds to injury. That's in the lower left. Now, let's say we, in, in a complementary study, we activate notch. Can we actually turn an old muscle into a young muscle in its capacity to regenerate? And the answer is we can. So here you see that an old muscle is looking much, much more like a regular young muscle in its regenerative capacity. So these sorts of experiments begin to give us clues as to what molecular changes are going on during muscle aging and how we might intervene in those changes. Now, finally, I'd like to talk about the possibility that the stem cells have their own intrinsic problems during aging, but the environment is aging as well. So the question here is, if we change the environment of an aging tissue, will the resident cells in that tissue respond in a different way? Let's look again at what happens in an injured muscle. In a young injured muscle, we have a very robust signal that seems to go through the entire muscle activating the satellite cells. It involves notch. It involves a lot of other things as well. And what that does is produce, in the end, a proliferation of the stem cells. In the older muscle, a similar injury is capable of in, in activating those same uh, responses, but they're blunted in some way, as if there was some negative damping down of the response to regenerate. And in that case, what you see then is less satellite cells. So would it be possible that there's a, an environmental effect here on the way these satellite cells are responding? And could there be some way that we could expose the young muscle to an old environment and the old muscle to a young environment? Now, short of transplanting muscles from young animals into old animals, which doesn't really give you that much information, Tom Rando came up with a very ingenious scheme. In this case, he asked the question, where's the fountain of youth? Is the young animal capable of reprogramming old muscle to respond to injury in a more effective way? Or is it possible that the old animal, if exposed to um, a young environment will actually in some way damp down the capacity for the young muscle to regenerate. To do this, he made parabiotic pairings between mice of different ages. Now, how this works is a small suture is made in the side of the animal's skin. In both cases, in these pairs, they are sutured together as if they were mini Siamese twins. Not their whole body, but just a small portion of their body is connected. At this point, what happens is that the circulation of the two animals begins to run into each other. And eventually, after a couple of days of this, the animals actually share the same circulation. Now, they share the same blood cells, but they also share all of the factors that are floating around in the serum of your blood. And the question then can be asked, what happens if you injure the young animal or the old animal in these what we call heterochronic pairings or partners? So I'm going to show you a complicated slide which uh, gives the answer to this question. And although it's complicated, it has a, a real uh, dramatic punchline here. So let's go through it very quickly. We're going to look first at the capacity for a young mouse to sustain injury when exposed to a young mouse's environment. That's a control because, in fact, we assume nothing's going to change. And in fact, if you see at the top, you're beginning now to be muscle experts, you can tell that that muscle there is actually regenerating pretty well. Now at the bottom, you see a stain for red. And red means new muscle forming. So where you see red on the lower panel, that means regeneration is 